the McCormick side, my roots began at a little church called St. Matthew's Chapel in Eastwood, North Carolina. And that's where I got to see Mrs. Lily, Lily Lee McLean get on the piano and do her thing. Right. So you had, I knew Elijah had talent coming from both sides, but how did you, Mom, discover? Okay, yeah, my son's got it too. Well, his papa, my dad, Mike McLean. Okay. He sings. Okay. I didn't um, know that. He's traveled before and sung. Uh-huh. Uh, my mom, uh-huh. she also sings. Okay. And then growing up, me and my sisters, we used to sing. Oh, I didn't know. See? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's my side of the family. Then, of course, like you mentioned, his granny side of the family, his dad's side. Uh-huh. You know, his dad plays drums. Uh-huh. Um, and then his aunts. Uh-huh. They sing. They all have beautiful voices. Mm-hmm. So it all fell onto Elijah. Okay. And he was blessed with it. He was blessed with it. Just as them, I was going to say. You know, they yes. were blessed with that as well. Um, One cool thing that I would say is that my grandpa, he used to sing with Shirley Caesar. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, he sang with her a while ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So we're going to give a shout out to Papa. <laughs> my with my. Uh huh. Mike McClain singing. With, I didn't know he sang as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's a tenor. As long as I'm <laughs> at this radio station, you're gonna hear a little bit more about Eastwood and all the talent that come out of that small community. Because I mean, you. there is some good talent coming out of that community. Um, matter of fact, the artist we had last week, uh, some of his uh, background is, or his parents' background, come out of that community. His okay. dad. Yeah. Um. So you decided to sign to sign Elijah up for American Idol. Did you tell him you were going to do this? Yes, I did. Okay. And what was his reaction? No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah, why didn't you want mom to sign you up for American Idol? So the first time she signed me up, I just felt like I wasn't ready for this big of a platform. Okay. Um, but, you know, a couple of years later, I figured out who I was as an artist, as a person. And, you know, I now I feel like I'm ready three years later. Okay. Um, and, and it's been exciting. You know? All right. That's good. That's good. Now... When you received the news that Elijah was se- selected, Mom, what what did you do? Ooh, she was crying. That's what she was doing. <laughs> um, a ball of emotions. Okay. And he gave me his date that he would do his auditions. And I didn't believe him at first, and so I didn't keep questioning him about it. Uh-huh. But then when that day came, he was like, Mama, it's my turn. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... um. When uh, tell us how you received the news. So we were on Zoom call. I was on the audition for like four hours and they had me recording videos. They had me answering questionnaires, sending all my information in. And I was like, okay. So then they um, we went through like three producer rounds and I finally got to the executive producer and she was like, oh, we're going to fly you out here to sing in front of Katy Perry, Luke Bryan and Lionel Richie. And my mom, she was standing there recording the whole time and she almost dropped the phone. She said, what? What? <laughs> and so I was like, they're going to fly me out. And she was like, can you say that again? And so she came and we hopped in the camera and the producer, she was like, uh, she was like, mom, why are you crying so much? And she was like, cause he's just been through so much, which uh-huh. is, which is so true. Uh-huh. Um, We're going to give you a house applause, mom, for this going ahead and following yeah. through, believing on your baby that that day would come for him. All right. So you, uh, mentioned that you have been through so much. Um, let's talk about that. When you say you've been through so much, tell us some of the things you've been you've gone through. Um, well, I, I've been in the car accident. Um, it happened right after graduation, mm-hmm. um, and that kind of, you know, gave gave my faith a boost because I ended up in the hospital for seventy nine days, and I flatlined nine times, and that was just a traumatic moment for me, um, for the whole family, honestly, Mm -hmm. and for everybody involved. So I'm just super, just super grateful for overcoming all those things that I, you know, been through. Amen. We're going to give you a house applause for that one. 
Most definitely a shout out to God. Oh, Amen. yeah. Yeah. Now, Mom, Tashana, Mrs. McCormick, will you please t- tell us about that day uh, when um, Elijah... You got your tissues ready. ...came into the car accident? <laughs> well, I mean, right after the graduation... We had breakfast. And when you say graduation, Mm -hmm. you mean his high school graduation. High school graduation. What year was that? 2019. 2019, okay. Yes, well, we had breakfast, and after breakfast, we went home. Elijah went to his friend's house, and then we were tired. So me and his dad, we laid down to get some sleep. Next thing I know, I'm getting a phone call from his friend, and she was like, Miss McCormick, Elijah's been in an accident. And I'm thinking it's just a fender bender, so I'm like, okay, we coming. But then when her mom called and was like, Miss McCormick, you really need to get here, that's when it set in that it's, nope, it's serious. Mm -hmm. So I woke up his dad, and I was like, we got to go. We get up, we get dressed, and we get there. And it was terrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of the photographs. Um... Of, of the accident and there was a fire uh, I don't know if it was on the vehicle you were in or the other vehicle but I believe it was the vehicle you were in is that correct yes Elijah? it was my car it was your car okay uh, I remember when uh, the prayer requests were coming through the social media lines um, <clears throat> and the way it sounded it was a very bad situation oh yeah uh, yeah, so I remember, uh, you know, again, just stopping and, and saying my quick little prayer for you, as well as joining faith with many others who knew you. Definitely. Uh, and, uh, man, it was just, I mean, you had us on the edge of our seats, like, yeah. wow. Those uh, prayers, they definitely got me through, um, and I'm so grateful for all, each and every one of them. Yeah. Um, people were reaching out to me while I was in the hospital bed. Oh, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you all over the world and uh-huh. literally, like literally all over the world. And I'm like, how'd you find out about that? I'm just waking up two uh-huh. weeks after, you know, uh-huh. it happened. So uh-huh. I was just super grateful. Give us an example. When you say, uh, all over the world, do, do you have friends? No. So the- actually I had this church reach out to me. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, do you remember where that church was? I have no idea. Oh, well, the church, it, um, I can't remember. They sent us pictures, and they were like, we're praying for you. Mm-hmm. And they had their youth group praying for me, and they were just sending me pictures of them, you know, surrounded, you know, surrounding the altar and just calling out my name. So, mm-hmm. Okay. Mom, tell us uh, when he was in the hospital, uh, which I, I'm assuming he was airlifted to one of the major hospitals from your small town. Uh was it UNC Chapel Hill? Yes. Okay. All right. Tell us what you guys did as a family when you were there waiting uh, for the doctors to work with, with uh, Elijah. Well, we, of course, we were praying. Mm-hmm. We were all emotional. Um, just talking about the good things that Elijah has done. I mean, you know, we were just waiting to hear the bad, to hear the good news, mm-hmm. but of course we knew what situation he was in. Mm-hmm. So all of his friends, they came. We all sat around. We talked. We laughed. We cried. Mm-hmm. And y'all just sang. waited. <laughs> yeah, and we of course we sang songs led by his aunt Cheryl. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. So what can do you mind sharing with us the details on what the doctors told you when you were there in the hospital on on Elijah? Well, there was, I mean, there was one that, you know, kept telling us he's sick. He's very sick. He's very sick. And I just told my, I got so tired of hearing it. Mm -hmm. So I I remember telling my husband, will you please tell her, do not say that again? Mm -hmm. Because if he wasn't, we wouldn't be here. Right. But I knew she was only doing her job. So, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned that because I just recently lost my father. And Mm -hmm. that's one of the things that the nurses kept repeating to us. He's a very sick man, very sick man. And I'm like, what does that mean initially? I mean, give me some more details, please. Does that mean he's not going to make it? Or does that mean, you know, I just didn't understand exactly what that meant. So, I mean, it was actually giving me hopes that he was going to come home. But Mm -hmm. then I finally had one doctor say it's, you know, he will not last through the night. 
or mm-hmm. we think it's going to happen today is basically what she told me. And it, it happened the next day. But uh, um, I'm the, so sorry to hear that. Thank you. you, know, thank you. I didn't know that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But uh, I feel like he's in a better place now. He's not suffering. So mm-hmm. it, it, I'm, I'm going to miss him, but of it's OK. Course. Yeah. Now, the time that he flatlined. Tell us about that, Mom. Well, I never, I mean, of course, they didn't run out each time and tell us, but when they finally told us, Mm -hmm. it was scary. But at the same time, I was, he flatlined, but he came back, Mm -hmm. flatlined, but he came back. So I was thankful, Mm -hmm. scared, but Mm -hmm. thankful. Amen. (laughs) Elijah, during that time when you were laying in bed and you were going through all of this, do you remember anything that that was happening to you? Oh, so for the first two weeks that I got there, I was on the ECMO machine, which is a machine that basically breathes for you. You have to be under um, surveillance for 24 hours. Like somebody has to always be watching you. Mm-hmm. Um, but just when I woke up, the first thing that I wanted to do was was sing again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I, I wanted to sing and um, just laying in the hospital bed. One weird thing is I never got lonely. Mm-hmm. You know, and most people in that situation, they definitely would be like, oh, I don't, you know, but just just being just being alive after hearing what you've been through mm-hmm. it is it was really a eye opening moment for me. Mm-hmm. Yes, God. yes, yes. And I'm going to give a house applause for that. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross. I am your host, P. Ross. We're on Oak 93.5 WRLY Raleigh, North Carolina. And in the house with me today, I have the golden child, (laughs) American Idol contestant Elijah McCormick and his lovely mother, Tashana McCormick. They are here giving us their story of um, or Elijah telling his story of uh, a car accident that he was in. And uh, it was uh, it was a real bad accident but since that accident he has done some great things such as made it as far as um american idol being a contestant there um elijah tell us a little bit about what you do now um so i'm currently enrolled at sand hills community college for medical billing and coding um planning to graduate in may um i work as an op i work as an ophthalmologist technician um in aberdeen um and you know i sing and i do gigs and you know i just go around singing and working eight to five it's not really (laughs) much time to do what i want to do but Uh uh-huh you know okay so now let me hear from you uh when did you discover hey i have a talent i really can sing oh so i knew when i was working on cars with my dad and instead of working on cars with him i was singing into the tools <laughs> so i was like oh yeah this is uh, singing is my passion and you know over the years i've just grown such a strong love for it and it, it's just really become a big part of my life okay tell us about the moment when you uh first sang before an audience um the first time i sang in front of an audience huh probably church yeah it was church um and when was the first time i was saying <laughs> <laughs> usually most people that's where they start they yeah start at church. It, it was definitely church i'm trying to remember if it was a specific event uh-huh. um but i i just i've always grown up in the church uh-huh. so singing in front of people that just wasn't new to me you know but the older that i got the more in depth i i would like just learn from singing okay you know? All right. Did you sing in any courses or choirs in your school? So K through 12th grade, I was always in choir. I was in musicals. I was in um, traveling choirs and FBLA. I did everything in high school just because, you know, just being involved with music. That's what I wanted to do. I did track and field. Um, I mean, I I did a bit of everything in you know, I'm grateful for those experiences and the things that I learned, you know, through those experiences. Uh huh. I remember the first time I think I actually met you and heard you sing. I don't know if you you remember this, but uh, your auntie Cheryl Blue mm-hmm. had contacted me to help her host her mother's. I think it was 90th birthday party. Right. And uh, 
she, I think she asked me to try to gather some musicians in place to do that. And mm-hmm. I think I, I was, re- I, I believe I was responsible for doing that. And I, I was familiar, familiar with the musicians that were there. And then uh, we had a rehearsal at the church uh, at Blue Angel Outreach, which used to be Word of Truth Christian, Christian Center. Mm-hmm. And when I stepped in the door, I was like, wow, okay, this place has really changed. But it, it took me back to when I used to go back to church, when I used to go to church there in the 90s. Um, and I think you came in, your cousin Aisha, who I was familiar with, yeah. and maybe one other person. I, I'm, I can't remember, though. Um, and I was like, okay, I know Cheryl can sing. I'm not sure about Aisha because I don't think she was singing when we were, oh, you know, going, going to church back <laughs> in the day. And then there was you. I hadn't heard sing at all. And wow. like I said, I, the musicians, I knew they were going to deliver and do what they were going to do. But I was like, let me see what is going to happen here. Can he really <laughs> sing? And man, I don't remember the song that you guys chose to sing. But the first one, I was like, oh, yeah, he can do it. He can do it. This is going to be good. So do you remember that? I don't know if you do I or don't. I do not. You don't? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you were, that was some years ago. So, uh, yeah. But uh, I was grateful to be a part of that celebration and to see you sing. I actually have a photograph. Of, at the really? end of that party, yes, uh, and it, it's kind of blurry. It's not the best quality photo, but th- there's you on the stage singing. Your dad's up there, and some more family members. I believe maybe Aisha and your aunt Cheryl, and a couple of other aunts from Detroit. And uh, you know, there, there was a stage full of people where we had the celebration for your grandmother. And uh, I was like, wow, I got to save this and, and send this to him. But uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would love to see that picture. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show it to you. I, I'll get it over to you. Okay. Let's talk about your journey to the American Idol, Idol Studios oh, yeah. or whatever. So tell us, I want to hear from when you first, it was day of going there, wherever you had to go. Tell us what city that was in. So it was in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. So you're on the plane where? Or you get you had to board the so plane. So I boarded with, the plane in Raleigh. In Raleigh, here in and Raleigh. And I went straight to Nashville. Okay. Um, we got off the plane and we went to the hotel. Okay. Did they have uh, uh, limousines waiting for you, or you have to provide your own ride to the hotel? Oh no, nah, they had like van drivers for us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Give me some details. Okay. So then you get to the hotel, and then what? Well, we have to get checked by security. We have to walk through the um. Through the through the thing, you know the is it the metal detector? I believe so. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we walk through the metal detector. Okay, and um, we get checked in. They're set up three tables. Um, one is the check in. One is the COVID testing. One is this, and it was just it was a whole bunch of people, and it was kind of like organized chaos. Um, organized chaos. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a tell good me thing. about that one. <laughs> it, I mean, it's a good thing because it was just so many people everywhere, but people were there to direct you and guide you to where you needed to go. So they made it, you know, less confusing looking, you know. Um, and then we went to get COVID tested, and we went up to the room, and that was it for the first day. And then I think we had a meeting. Didn't we? Well, I had a meeting, and they gave us the itinerary. And, you know, just the next three or four days is what we're going to be doing. Okay. Mom, what were you doing when he was gone to rehearsals or did you go with him? Well, we had to sit and wait at the bottom of the um, hotel. Okay. So I didn't get to see him until after his long days. Uh You know, I was conversating with other parents and contestants. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Um, Elijah, so tell us about the moment you stepped into the room so, for your audition with, uh, with Lionel Richie and Katy Perry and Luke Bryan. Tell us about that. So it's actually funny because I really was not nervous at all because I've been doing this since I was a little boy. I mean, anybody who's been doing this for so long would be like, okay, you know, I got this. Mm-hmm. But then as soon as you open up the door... And you see the judges and like they're just face to face with you. It's like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Hold on. Hold on. Let me get myself (laughs) together. And, you know, then you go step on the circle. I mean, the oval where lives have been changed. So you realize, oh, this is my moment. Uh So, you know, you just lock in and you just release. Lock in and release. I hear you, sir. (laughs) I hear you. All right. Because I know I watched that video several times and I was like, 
it seemed like you took a big deep breath uh, yeah. and then you went right into it because i was like oh wow you know i was mm-hmm. like what is he feeling right now what is he you know how's how is he gonna do you know and it's like when you took that deep breath the sky was the limit for mm-hmm. you you know you just did a remarkable job thank you why'd you choose the song that you chose um, well, I've been singing the song since I was a little boy. Mm-hmm. I've sang it at Boys and Girls Club. I've sang it with my dad during karaoke. Mm-hmm. And I, I just love the song. I love the genre of the song. It's country music. And um, I just feel like country music tells a story. Mm-hmm. But I went on the show and I sang the song. And now it has a totally different meaning. Like the song was put into perspective as to why I chose that song and why it had such a meaning to me. Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. man when lionel richie <laughs> the great lionel richie was over there dropping the t- dabbing his tears man mm-hmm. i was like oh he's got <laughs> lionel richie crying <laughs> <laughs> what did you feel at that moment um my eyes were closed the whole time i, I didn't even see anything that they did so when okay. we when it aired i was watching it with everybody you know because i had my eyes closed the whole time uh-huh. and you know yeah then you were able to express your story about the golden child when Katy Perry mentioned, I believe it was Katy Perry mm-hmm. that called you a golden child. Uh, or, I think or, Lionel Richie. Or was it Lionel Richie? Yeah. Okay. You got into the discussion of golden child mm-hmm. and you mentioned how the nurses on your floor when at, when you had the accident uh, referred to you as the golden child. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit more about that, please. So when I first got to the hospital, I was in the intensive care unit um and i had no id my car caught on fire the license burned up and it was no way to identify me so they saw that my hair was gold like bright gold and they were like (laughs) oh yeah we're gonna call him the golden child and so my mom she told me that a couple of days after i woke up i was like what they calling me the golden child where's my id (laughs) you know so it it was just oh i have a nickname and that's what they called me the whole time i was there all 79 days the golden child now you didn't have natural golden hair, oh, right? No. No, 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 no. It's just that your hair, yeah, you the tips had of my hair. the tips of your hair yeah. were, were a gold color. Okay. All right. How did you said you had your eyes closed during mm-hmm. your audition? And I believe the first person that walked up to you off of that judge's counter was uh, Luke Perry. Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan. I'm sorry. Ooh, excuse me. Luke Bryan. And uh, he, he came, came over to you and gave you a c- couple of handshakes and then a hug. How did you feel? It, it felt great because, I mean, for him to approach me after I get done singing, it's like that's a huge statement to me. Um, and for him to be like, oh, yeah, man, you just did that. That was like confirmation to me. Like, OK, I'm doing the right thing in life. Mm-hmm. So, yes. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross. I am your host, P. Ross, and I have in the studio with me here at Oak 93.5, Mr. Elijah McCormick, a contestant on season 21's American Idol, and his beautiful mother, Miss Tashana, Mrs. Tashana McCormick. <laughs> all right. So that moment when uh, all the judges came up to you, gave you love, hugs, they asked you about your mother. Mm -hmm. And I believe they asked you to go get mom, right? What were you thinking, Tashana, that moment that Elijah stepped out of that door and said, Mom, come here. They want to see you. Well, first, I was like, okay, I do not see a golden ticket. What's the problem? (laughs) (laughs) But then when he said they want to see you, I I know everybody probably heard me. I was like, huh? (laughs) And so I just went on my way and went through those doors. Okay, and... What transpired after you went through the doors? Oh, my God. When I saw Lionel, Katie, and Luke, I got weak. And I remember (laughs) Elijah, he was holding me as I was walking in, and he was like, Mama, just breathe. Just breathe. (laughs) Breathe, Mama, breathe. (laughs) I got myself together because I'm a a very emotional person. But I think I did good. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what was for some that did not see the show? Tell us what they said to you. I can't even remember. I just remember when um, Lana Richie gave me that hook. <laughs> <laughs> I still have not washed that shirt and it's still <laughs> hanging in my closet. <laughs> All right, Mama. Mama says she has not washed that shirt. Yeah, I think that 
I think the, that moment was a blur for you know the both of us. We were just so present in the moment and soaking it all up. So <laughs> that set looks amazing on it's there. Beautiful. Does it? Is I mean, oh, yeah. how big is that room, Elijah? Um, it's big. It's big. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> okay, and they do that in a hotel or. I mean, do they set that up in a hotel, or can you? Was that at tell, the hotel? Or was that in a uh, different building? Or did we travel? Because we were traveling up and down the. Um, I think it was at the hotel. It was one of the rooms in the hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Elijah, you are a big brother to younger sisters. Tell us about your family. Oh, um, I love them. I'm a family man. Um, uh, I love spending time with them. You know. And each day, we're always learning something new about each other. It's like, oh, my God, I'm still learning stuff about you. Uh, I've been around you for 21 years. But, I mean, we all just kind of uplift each other and just kind of love on each other. My dad, he's he's working. My mom, she's working. My sister, she's in college. My other sister, she's um, in elementary school, but she also does dance classes. And then there's me and, you know, just... Uh, uh-huh. Their family. How do they feel? How do they feel about brother being on American Idol and being a contestant? <laughs> they are so excited. Um, they said people come. Chloe, my younger sister, mm-hmm. her friends are like my biggest fans. Chloe had a birthday party a couple weekends ago, mm-hmm. and one of her friends was there, and she said, "Can you please sing for me? Can you please sing for me?" <laughs> and she asked the whole party, and I was like, "Okay, well, I, I was singing." So <laughs> I sang "You Are the Reason" by um, Caleb Scott and. You could hear a pin drop. And yeah. it's like the same reaction that adults give, little kids give. And that's what puts a smile on my face. Yeah. I was going to uh, talk about that later in the show. <laughs> I wanted to commend you for doing that to your, doing that for your little sister's friend. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Somebody caught that and, and had it on, so caught that, captured that moment and had it on uh, social media. And I saw that and I was like, wow, that is so nice and kind of you yeah. to do that. So I just want to say thank you. If nobody else had, <laughs> you know, I, I really, um, that was inspiring for you to do. Um, did you, well, tell me how you chose to prepare for your American Idol moment. I mean, do you... Um, go through any voice training so I, you, well i spend a lot of time you know trying to find the right song mm-hmm. because i feel like that's what that's what starts your album necessarily on the show because i want people to look back at all of my performances on the show and be like oh my god that's a great album mm-hmm. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. so just picking the right songs um i did some vocal warm-ups that i learned throughout chamber ensemble in high school um, and I reached out to my chamber ensemble teacher, um, Aaron Slink, and she gave me a lot of insight and a lot of tips on singing and, you know, where to breathe, don't do that, you're a little flat here. <laughs> so <laughs> she just kind of helped me out, and I was very appreciative of, of that, you know, her coming out because she started her life, and, you know, her making time for me, that meant a lot. Uh-huh, and I want to give a house applause to your teacher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh... Did you have any other, did you have any interaction with any of the other contestants oh. that were there at the show? So I talked to almost everybody there. It's like a music camp. Um, okay. Nobody's uh-huh. thinking about it as a competition. Uh-huh. Everybody's just kind of, oh, you sing that song. Let me sing with you. You mm-hmm. play that guitar. I want to play with you. So it's like we're just all singing in a big group most of the time. And um, yeah. I just really love each and every one of them. It's not one that I can be like, oh, yeah, that that's my best friend, you mm-hmm, know, because mm-hmm. I mean, each one of them, they're talented and they all bring something to the table. Yes, and right. um, I'm so grateful just to be surrounded by so many talented people, because it's not every day you go into a room and you see you're filled with so many sl- I keep wanting to say celebrities. See, I'm speaking <laughs> into existence. Um, <laughs> yeah, just so many idols, you know, being around them, and they do the same thing you do. So it's it's very heartwarming. You uh-huh. know? Now you mentioned celebrity status. You're kind of there already. I'm gonna tell you why. Because back in your hometown, uh, I've seen you <laughs> already doing great things. You went back to the great 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 pinecrest yes, high school yes. where you attended high school, <laughs> and we have too. So uh, you were 
called back to do a, um, you sang the national anthem. I did. Yes. Okay. Tell us the event. Um, so it was the opening of their new turf field. Um, they closed down the field so they could get it painted, get it ready for the new season of sports. Mm-hmm. And um, the coach, he reached out to me and he was like, would you be interested in singing it? And I was like, of course, you know. So mm-hmm. we planned it and we talked details and then I showed up and he gave me the rundown of how things were going to work. And, you know, I sang it. Okay. And uh, you made the front page of the local newspaper there. I want to give you a house of applause. I don't know if you've seen that. I did not. But I did see it early Wednesday morning. I saw that. They had a picture of the new turf and you next to it. So (laughs) you got to go to the pilot newspaper and get a version of that and keep keep for your records. Um, Also, uh, I've seen on social media back in the hometown where you have just made guest appearances all over the place, <laughs> man. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that celebrity <laughs> status is, is climbing up the ladder for you, uh, yeah. Elijah. So then that's good. I just, uh, <laughs> want to say that that's a wonderful thing. All right. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Chat City with P. Ross. I'm your host, P. Ross. I have in the studio with me today at Oak 93.5 WRLY here in Raleigh, Miss Tashana McCormick, Mrs. Tashana McCormick, the mother of the one, the only, the golden child, (laughs) contestant Elijah McCormick on American Idol this season, and uh, it's season 21. Uh, Elijah, help us understand the challenge process with the different tickets that uh, you earn to make your way to the next step. So like during the audition process Mm -hmm. or when you get to the, um, after your audition? Well, I don't understand it at all. (laughs) So you have to take me from the beginning. So I know there's a platinum ticket, I believe, Mm -hmm. and a gold ticket. Um, How, I mean, tell us about that. This year we did something like, america's platinum ticket and Mm -hmm. um america got the opportunity to vote they aired like a minute of the audition before the season was aired and america got to vote on that and yeah we find out the winner when we go to hollywood okay i'm excited all right so the different tickets uh, is based off of votes of Mm -hmm. folks who who have so the golden ticket is Uh to push you through hollywood if you get three yeses from the judges but if you get america's vote that's when you get america's platinum ticket okay all right. And what's the difference between the two? America's voting and the judges are voting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you've attained, obtained which tickets? Um, Both. You said you've obtained how many? <laughs> both of them. Two tickets. Okay. All right. And you can watch more of that this weekend. Sunday at? 8 p.m. on the ABC channel. All right. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. All right. So... <laughs> The gold ticket advances you to Hollywood. Yes. Have you been to Hollywood? Um, yes. Yeah, so we filmed all that stuff like last year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just scrambling through my notes here Come trying to figure out uh, what else to ask you, ask you next because I have so <laughs> much to ask you. Um. Just go down the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy sometimes. It's not that easy sometimes. <laughs> All right. Now, um, if you do not make Amer- uh, America's next choice for Idol, mm-hmm. what will you do? Well, so I just took a break from my job. Tomorrow is actually my last day, and I decided that I want to take my music career a lot more serious. Okay. Um, this process has definitely made me fall in love way more with music, and I, I was already in love with music, so you can only imagine the amount of compassion and passion that I have for it. Um, so I just want to continue making music, go to the studio, record, um, you know, hopefully be be in the mainstream one day. All right, we hear you. Um, do you write your own music or I have do. you produced any new songs or? so i do have some songs written um i have not recorded them yet okay all right i'm excited i want to hear those yeah. one day okay um and you do have a manager is that correct um not a manager more like a momager 
Okay, a momager. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my mom, she's just there coaching me through. You okay. know, we just kind of both figuring it out as we go along this process. I understand. I understand. Mom, what do you see for Elijah in the future? Um, going big. Okay. Yeah. Famous on somebody's stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And how does dad feel about everything? Dad's excited. Uh-huh. Um... He's proud of him. And he's glad he's living out his dreams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the music and entertainment industry can be very rewarding, Elijah. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with fame, stardom, riches. Uh, but as you also know, um, there is a dark side oh, yeah. to the business. Drugs, alcohol, addiction, scandals, mm -hmm. depression. Um have you considered how to handle all sides of the industry once you enter in? Um, honestly, I have not thought thought that far. I'm just kind of enjoying life and taking it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, because you never know. You could be on the good side of the industry where there is no problems. Um, so it's just like you, you never know. But I would deal with that by just... Um, it's really hard to say how, mm -hmm. how you would deal with that stuff until you're in that situation. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Now, is there a particular genre of music that you prefer to oh, sing? So I love country music, R&B, and inspirational music. Uh -huh. So if there's a mashup in between the three, then <laughs> that, that's where I would want to be. Okay. You know, or those three and then Christian mm -hmm. gospel music. Okay. Somewhere around there. All right. Now... Katie Perry. Uh, I'm not sure if you know a lot about her background, and she is one of the judges on American Idol. Um, oh, yeah, we love Katie. All right. <laughs> We're going to give a shout out to Katie if you're listening. Hello. <laughs> but Katie Perry, uh, she started, uh, well, her influence is mainly on modern pop music. Mm hmm. But she started as a gospel artist. You mentioned gospel. Mm hmm. Uh, she started as a gospel artist. At age 16. Okay. And uh, she changed it, uh, I believe, because um, her desires to be in a bigger commercial market was unsuccessful, maybe with her gospel mm -hmm. uh, project. So uh, she underwent a name change. Um, she was not known as Katy Perry when she stepped out on the scene. She was known as Katie Hudson. I believe she was going by her birth name, but mm -hmm. now she's Katie Perry. Um, Elijah, you have a biblical name. Yes. And it's uh, centered around uh, the prophet. There was a prophet in the Bible, Elijah. Correct, yeah. Uh, and he was also known as a miracle worker. Now, you going into uh, the business, and it looks like you're going to try to enter in it full time, going all the way with it um do you consider things like name changes and i don't see particular a, i really don't see a area. reason to change my name okay. um elijah mccormick i think that sounds you know it's perfect perfect <laughs> there we go that's right yes and mom tell us why you chose a, a biblical name for your son i really don't have a reason um when i named all three of my kids i tried to stick around something that has to you know, stay with the biblical God. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Elijah is a beautiful name, a wonderful name. <laughs> and I like it. I, 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 I love it when parents choose biblical names. Mm -hmm. You know, some people kind of frown at that sometimes, but I, I think it's a wonderful thing. You know, Me too. Uh, it's very wonderful. Names have meaning. Yes, they do. You have to be careful how you, I mean, you know, the name mm -hmm. that you place on your children sometime, right. you know. Um, I remember, actually, your grandfather teaching that in uh, wow. um, in Theodore Bible Spencer. studies and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, the late great pastor, Theodore, Theodore Spencer. Spencer. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and, Give him uh, a shout out. <laughs> yes. And I mean, I'm telling you, I've, I've gone to many churches, many Bible studies, many Sunday schools, and I will tell you, I've the most I've ever learned in depth was from that man. And yeah. I truly appreciated him when he was here on this earth. Yeah. Um, 
So, Elijah, what's the next step for you? So the after, next step for after after Idol. Okay. Um, if you win, let's say if you win Idol, then what's what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna record, record, record. Okay. Probably uh-huh. gonna move out to Nashville, record some more. Okay. Um, you know, it's just gonna be life. You know, the uh-huh. winner from last season. He came and he talked to us and he gave us some insight and he was just saying, this has been one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And, you know, I want to come back next year and say that to the next season. So I just want to be, you know, following in his footsteps. Okay. All right. Something I like to do with some of my guests, especially the ones that are in the musical field. I like to test your knowledge on some things because uh, and it, and don't get nervous. I mean, it's nothing bad to where we're going to make you look bad or anything like that. So uh, I'm one of these folks that say, hey, we are losing a lot of good music. Music just isn't the same. And I guess every, uh, I don't know, person can kind of say that from the older generations to the younger. Uh, But I I really appreciate the music in my era, like from artists such as, well, I'm not going to say. Uh, but because <laughs> this is part of our uh, a little thing that I'm getting ready to do with you here. So I told your, um, I guess it was your publicist or the person I uh, mm-hmm. interacted with. It was my publicist. Uh, and yeah. getting you here. Uh, I told her that I would not make a request for you to sing. But what I would like to do right now is play a few familiar tunes that are familiar with to me maybe your mother as well <laughs> but i want to test your knowledge to see are they familiar with you is that okay to do with you that is fine today Let's okay <laughs> all right i'm excited all right so and i made them fairly easy i do believe so uh let's try this one i'm gonna play a little bit of it there concentrate I, I, we've chosen the karaoke versions on it and uh, let's see what you can do with it, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> I know this one. Oh, wait. It kind of makes you want to sing with it, though. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tricky. Make up something to it. If you can. <laughs> All right. I think, I think, I think, was that the right? Okay. Yeah. Do you know the artist? Uh, I don't, but I know the song. You know the song. What's mm-hmm. the, what is the song? No, like I, I'm familiar with the song, okay. like the sound of the song. All right. Mom, uh-huh. can you tell them what the song is? I sure can. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Mom, we're going to have to, uh, Give you a dog. Okay. <laughs> no, that was the late great Luther Vandross, and the song is "Never Too Much." Never too much. Oh yeah. Now, okay. I want you to learn Luther Vandross because I want to hear you sing some Luther Vandross in the future. Okay. You know, somebody told me to sing that song too. That's 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 so crazy. <laughs> learn Luther Vandross. You'll yeah. do well with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So here's the next one. You don't even got to play no more. I got it. <laughs> it's Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. All right. He there said we go. <laughs> Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. All right. And this last one. Um, I didn't do an instrumental on this one. But uh, let's see if you can pick this one up. Uh-oh. It's coming, it's coming. Mm, Lionel Richie, Jesus oh, is love. All right. Uh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. I was going to get mad at you if you didn't get that one right. There we go. <laughs> Him in the right. Commodore. <laughs> all right. Father. All right, that was the uh, Lionel Richie. Yes. I'm gonna have to play that when I leave now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. This is your opportunity to call into the station if you have a question for Mr. McCormick here, Elijah McCormick, our contestant on American Idol season 21. The number is nine one nine eight nine 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 three zero five. Do not be shy. 
again, you can call in if you wish to talk to Mr. Elijah McCormick right now at 919-899-9305. Or if you have a question for his mom, we'll, we'll allow that as well. All right. So, Elijah, um, we recently had, well, no, let me ask you this question first. Who is your biggest musical influence? Hmm. That's, that's a tricky one. Just one? You can name them all <laughs> okay. if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> we got Usher, we got Tank, we got Gibeon, and we have John Legend. You know, I was going to say, when I heard you sing <laughs> on American Island, the first thing I thought was John Legend. Did you get that from a lot of people? Yes. Yeah, that's what the comments say. They call him the Little comments, J yeah. at home. Little J. <laughs> okay, Little J. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Um, To be compared to him, honestly, it is amazing, you know, because he's such a talented artist, gifted artist, and, you know, his his music, you know, he speaks, he sings from a place. Um, I don't know what that place is, but you can, you can tell that it's just very... It's very melodic in it. You want to listen to his music. so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the music that I want to make. Um, just music that everybody can listen to and be like, I can play this at any time of the day. You uh -huh. know? Yes. Now, your dad played plays drums. Yeah. Your grandmother played piano. Mm -hmm. Do you play any instruments? I tried to learn the keyboard, but that... It didn't work out. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, just just the placement, the keys, and it, it just it just wasn't my my jam. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any interest in any other instruments? Um. Well, you know, seeing so many people play guitar at American Idol, it's uh -huh. like, dang, and you're it's just five strings right there, and you're creating a whole song. Uh -huh. So it's like a guitar wouldn't be an instrument that I wouldn't mind playing. Okay. No. I would encourage encourage you to find get a guitar and, and start playing. And there's so many different brands of guitars mm -hmm. and different sounds and different. It's so much that you know goes into the good instrument of a guitar. So. Yes, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I wanted to learn how to play bass guitar. Really? And actually, there was a young lady that kind of talked me out of it. She was like, "Your hands are gonna get rough." You know. Oh no. You know, she was like, "Don't do it. <laughs> you, you you don't do it." And I'm like, "Okay, but." You know, so I never did pick it back up or I never picked it up and I uh, didn't do it. But now I wish I would have because yeah. I like I like bass guitar. Um, there was a school shooting uh, a couple of days ago in mm -hmm. Nashville. Nashville. I'm, I'm not sure if you heard about that. Rest in peace to those sweet souls. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. they had so much more life to live. Mm hmm. Yeah. You're right. And our hearts and prayers go out to all those yes. families and everybody affected by that Definitely. tragic shooting. Mm -hmm. Elijah, we have so much of that going on in this country today. Mm -hmm. What is your solution to get rid of all of that? Um, I mean, we could secure our schools a little more, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it wouldn't have happened if we had security guards around the schools. So, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a that's a start. <laughs> that is a start. That's a start. Mom, can you piggyback off of that, please? Being a mother of three children, what do you think <clears throat> we should do in this country to stop all of this violence against our children in schools? Well, we could pay. I think we could pay more attention to our kids because there's a lot that are hurting and don't know who to turn to. Of course, prayer. Mm -hmm. um, I work at a school. So when I see or hear something in my office, it's usually where they will take off running to get to the emergency, and I immediately go into prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So I just want to give you guys house applause on that. And again, we want to send our um, prayers out to all those that were affected uh, by yeah. this uh, tragic mm. yes. loss of life here and senseless crime, senseless crime. Yeah. Um, all right. So Elijah, um, you think you'll ever get your sisters or your family on stage with you? Do your sisters sing? 
um have any talents so my oldest sister she does sing but she does not like to sing at all <laughs> but we always hear her singing around the house so it's it's fresh to us but to other people they're like oh my god sing 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 and then my younger sister she really doesn't sing she likes to dance she likes she actually, to dance yeah okay. she has a recital coming up in a couple months and we're excited about that so okay all right so just a well-rounded talented family oh yeah did you know this this was going to happen mom amongst your kids no i did not uh, <laughs> but looking i mean you know their daddy he's outgoing uh -huh. and he's very talkative me i'm more of the shy type okay so but i guess the lord blessed us with three kids that can take more you know a part of me with them and a part of their dad with them uh-huh mm -hmm. uh-huh uh -huh. all right so and um your auntie cheryl blue I just seen her today, actually. Okay. All right. How does it, now? We had her on the show not too long ago, uh, last year. Yeah, or earlier I seen in that the year. One. Uh huh. But she wasn't here because of her musical voice. Uh, we she was here because of uh, um, we had her as a power couple here in the station, mm -hmm. listed as one of our power couple guests, and we also talked a little bit about religion, a little bit on religion. Mm -hmm. So uh, how does and, and she's an awesome singer. Like I said, how does uh what does she have to say about everything that you've gone through so far with uh just keep your eyes and your ears talent. open you know we uh -huh. sit and we talk for hours but the biggest takeaway that i get from our conversations is keep your eyes and your ears open you know um because people will people will try to come at you left and right mm -hmm. you know so you just got to be aware of your surroundings and you know make smart moves mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I have a question for you, too. I wanted to ask you early and forgot. Of course. To. All right. So when you were at American Idol, mm -hmm. um, the piano player that was there with you, you did he do that on the spot or you did? I mentioned something of, of a rehearsal so and of I the, didn't mean to, but uh, do you rehearse with him or? Yeah. No. So we get each contestant. I think it was about it was three about 300 of us in wow. auditions. Um and we had 15 minutes to rehearse with him. We got about three 15 minute sessions and, you know, it just kind of, we just kind of worked. It's the progress between those three sessions is amazing. Cause you get in there first and you're like, Oh my God, is this going to work? And then you get in the second one. You're like, okay, now I know what I need to work on. But then you get to that third one and you're like, Oh yeah, we're ready to go. And then Fredly, he's just, he's amazing. He can play literally anything. Uh huh. You know, to get yeah. to witness that is like that's an inspiration too. Okay. Have you kept in touch with any of the contestants that's on the show with you since? Uh, yeah. Doing things. So we're all in this group chat. Oh, you're in a group <laughs> yeah. chat. Okay. Good. And we text back and forth all day, every day. We send like if one of us ran into a hate comment, we're like, oh my god, look what this person said, <laughs> and we just kind of all laugh about it and keep going. So. Uh huh. North Carolina has been blessed with a lot of talent. You have Clay mm -hmm. Aiken, uh, Fantasia Barino, yeah. um, Ashley Blondie Smith, who I used to work with actually in Charlotte, really? North Carolina. Uh -huh. wow. I, I believe she made it to Hollywood and she actually helped me with a project down in Pinehurst one time. And uh, I mean, so much talent here in North Carolina. Definitely. You know, so uh, we've got a few seconds left. Elijah, I just want to tell you and your mother, thank you so very much for coming to Raleigh today. Thank you for having us. And being a guest us. on yes. Chat City. Thank I'm so grateful <laughs> for you to do that for me today. Tell us what you want to say to the world at this particular moment. Just never give up on your dreams. It's always going to be obstacles and hills you got to climb and deep rivers you got to swim through but you know at the end of it all you know you'll see the greater good of it all and you'll just come out stronger than you went in and you'll be able to look back on where you started and be like oh my god this is this has really been a blessing over time and you can look it back at it and you can laugh at it and you know just keep going indeed Sir, again, thank you for being a guest on the show today. Mom, thank you. Mom, manager, how did, how did you address her? Ma Mom Momager. 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 <laughs> Momager, thank you for coming here. And uh, tune back in with us on next week, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Chat City with P. Ross. We're signing off on Oak 93.5 FM.